Hello children, welcome to this JE crash course. The chapter for discussion is oscillations, waves and sound. We have already went through the synopsis, familiarized with the equations and of course concepts. Now it's the time to take up a couple of problems, understand how to work with the equations and applications. Example 1. Three SHMs of equal amplitude A and equal time period in the same direction combine. The difference in phase between each pair is 60 degree ahead of each other. The amplitude of the resultant oscillation is. There are three SHMs and of course amplitudes are same and each one of them are if you consider any two the phase difference between those two successively is 60 degree the amplitude of the resultant oscillation. Whenever multiple SHMs are given to you, it is a good idea to use phasor diagrams. Let us draw the phasor. The phasor for the first SHM is like this, amplitude is A and the second is like this, this is of amplitude A, 60 degree and the third is ahead by 60 degree this is also of amplitude A, 60 degree. So, let us call them as 1, 2 and 3. So, if I consider 1 and 3, you notice that the phase difference between 1 and 3 is 120. So, if I consider them, it is 120. And if I combine 1 and, t, 1 and 3, we get one more SHM of amplitude A. You know that the resultant of any two vectors of equal magnitude aligned at 120 degree is equal to magnitude of any one of them. So, what do we have now? We have SHM of amplitude A, uh, this and this have given rise to, they gave rise to this one and one more already exists whose amplitude is A. So, if you put them together, the resultant amplitude becomes 2A. So, the amplitude of the resultant SHM is 2A. B is our correct choice. Example 2. A spring is loaded with two blocks M1 and M2 where M1 is rigidly fixed with a spring and M2 is just kept on M1 block. The maximum energy of oscillation poss possible for the system having the block M2 in contact with M1 is. So, the construction can be shown like this. Spring is loaded with two blocks M1 and M2 where M1 is rigidly fixed with the spring and M2 is just kept on M1 block. This is M1 and here is M2. The maximum energy is such that block M2 is in contact with M1. So, if I consider the free body diagram of this M2, what do we have? We have M2G, we have N and M2G minus N is equal to M2A because the system is not in equilibrium, it is moving down, say, acceleration is along this direction, whether it is moving up or down, the acceleration is in this direction. And this is m2 into omega square a, where a is the amplitude. Now, for if contact is lost, then n becomes 0, which implies m2 g is equal to m2 omega square a or a is equal to g divided by omega square. So, this is the amplitude or you can say and we also know that omega square is equal to k divided by m1 plus m2 that is the angular frequency. So, we have a is equal to g divided by omega square g divided by what is that omega square? k divided by m1 plus m2 
and the maximum energy corresponds to half k a square if i substitute and simplify i get 1 by 2 m1 plus m2 whole square g square divided by k square and we are left with k here so this is our expression for the maximum possible energy of the system which option does it correspond to yes option c m1 plus m2 whole square g square divided by 2k and incidentally uh, this also corresponds to the same thing right m1 plus m2 whole square g square divided by 2k okay no issue next one a block p of mass m is placed on a frictionless horizontal surface another block q of same mass is kept on p and connected to the wall with the help of a spring of spring constant k as shown mu is the coefficient of friction between p and q the blocks move together performing shm of amplitude a and the maximum value of friction between p and q is okay simple problem appears to be complicated that's not the case simple now suppose i consider the maximum value of friction so notice that the construction can be shown like this this is p this is q with this spring attached over here this being kept on the ground mu as being the question of friction if i consider the maximum force of friction that is equal to m into a m into omega square into a right m into what is omega so you know that omega is equal to root of k by m now the two masses are same so uh, omega actually becomes root of k divided by 2m thus this omega square becomes k divided by 2m therefore if i substitute what do i get this is equal to m omega square that is k by 2m into a so that simplifies to you can notice that one set of uh, a cancels leaving uh, k one set of m cancels leaving k a divided by 2 so the maximum value of force of friction between p and q is k a divided by 2 example 4 there is a spring with natural length l naught two masses m1 and m2 are connected to both of the ends as shown the whole system is held at rest at t is equal to 0 m2 is released and the system starts free fall initial stretch initial stretch length of the spring before the fall is l what is the displacement of center of mass as a function of time? Okay. So, notice that both of them are connected and the system is held at rest. And M2 is released. M2 is released. Now, when M2 is released, uh, the system starts falling and we have to find out the acceleration of, sorry, the displacement of center of mass. Now, to find out the displacement of center of mass, all right, this is equal to half acceleration of center of mass into t square assuming the acceleration of center to uh, acceleration of center of mass to be constant so let us see what is that acceleration of center of mass you know that it is given by m1 a1 plus m2 a2 divided by m1 plus m2 right so if i substitute what do i get here this becomes m1 into a1 g plus m2 into g divided by m1 plus m2 that is nothing but g itself so acceleration of center of mass is g so if i substitute this value in the equation that i obtained earlier what i am getting half acm into t square half gt square 
So the acceleration of center of mass is simply given by half, sorry, displacement of center of mass is given by half into g into t square. So b is our correct choice. Displacement of center of mass is half g t square. Example 5. A simple pendulum of length 4.9 meter is immersed in liquid of density 0.4 kg per meter cube. Then the time period of the pendulum is given that the density of the bob is 0.8 kg per meter cube. Okay. So uh, here the construction is like this. This is the natural position and this is the displaced position. What are all the forces acting? Weight and tension and of course up thrust. Right? And we can find out the period of oscillation of this simple pendulum by writing all the forces. How do we write that? So notice that the restoring force is basically because of this, if I consider it like this, this is basically mg minus up thrust. So if I consider the perpendicular distance between this and this, this is what I get, L sin theta. So this is L and this is L sin theta, if I assume this as theta this is theta so I have L sin theta so I can write torque is equal to mg minus up thrust into L into theta for small theta that is minus I alpha is equal to mg minus up thrust into L into theta or alpha is equal to minus mg minus up thrust into L divided by I into theta further minus mg minus up thrust into L divided by I, I is ml square, moment of inertia. So now you know that up thrust is nothing but the volume of the liquid displaced into density of the liquid displaced into G and the value of mg, its weight is volume of the solid into density of the solid into G but VL and VS are equal to each other. So if I substitute all of them in this equation for the uh, acceleration and simplify for the period, I get time period is equal to 2 pi root L divided by G into 1 minus rho divided by sigma. 2 pi root of, is that L 4.9? Yes, G is 9.8 or I can take it as 10 or 9.8 here because this helps me in cancellation. 1 minus 1 divided by 2. He has given the values here. Uh, rho is 0 0.4 and uh, density of the bob is 0 0.8. So 0 0.4 by 0 0.8 that is 1 divided by 2. So if I simplify this, I get time period as 2 pi seconds. So time period is equal to 2 pi seconds. C is our correct choice. Example 6. A particle of mass m is attached to three identical springs a, b and c each with a force constant k as shown. If the particle of mass m is pushed slightly against the spring a and released, the period of oscillation is ok. So we can show the construction like this. This is the orientation. This is the initial orientation. And of course this angle is 45 degrees. So let me push it by a small distance x. The particle is pushed down by a distance x. Clearly this spring is compressed by x. 
and this is the new position of this spring A and B. Now, this is approximately equal to x cos 45 and this is also approximately equal to x cos 45. So, the spring forces are kx cos 45 and kx cos 45 and of course, kx. So, kx cos 45, kx cos 45 and kx. Now, if I resolve this into components, I get this as kx. So, uh, this is going to be kx sin 45 and this is kx cos 45 into cos 45 that is cos kx cos 45 into sin 45, kx cos 45 into cos 45 because I am taking the component of kx cos 45 itself. So, this becomes kx cos 45 sin 45. Remember, I am taking the component of this force. So, in all I have 2 kx cos 45 cos 45 and kx. So, in the vertical direction the total force is 2 kx cos 45 into cos 45 plus kx. This is the net unbalanced force which is minus m a because this is basically a restoring force. Cos 45 square is nothing but you know 1 by 2 plus kx or it simply becomes 2 kx. Thus, I have minus m a is equal to 2 kx or a is equal to minus 2 k divided by m into x and you know that this is omega square. Omega square therefore is 2 k divided by m therefore the time period is 2 pi by omega 2 pi root m divided by 2 k 2 pi m divide uh, root of m divided by 2 k. So, the time period of oscillation is 2 pi root m divided by 2 k. This is our correct choice. Example 7. A particle performs SHM in a straight line. In the first second starting from rest, it travels the distance A and in the second that is next second, it travels B in the same direction. The amplitude of SHM is ok. For second that means starting from rest, it travels a distance A and in the next second B. Ok. So, because it starts from rest, so notice that he says starting from rest, it travels a distance A and next it becomes B in the same direction. So, the particle starts the journey from this position say and it travels distance A and distance B. So, I can write using the equation x is equal to a cos omega t, a is equal to a cos omega into t, t is first second. This takes one second and this is also another second, correct? And in the next second, it travels a distance b. But remember, the total distance traveled is a plus b. So, I should write for the second part a plus b is equal to a cos 2 omega. You remember, the displacement is always measured like this. So, if I simplify it further, what do I get? I get a plus b is equal to, uh, this becomes therefore, a is equal to a minus a cos. Remember, this is a minus a. So, this is basically a minus a because the distances are always measured from the uh, mean position. So, this should be written as, this a should be written as a minus a is equal to a cos omega. You should be very careful here. Remember, even though the distance traveled is a, this is the distance you are talking of. So, this is a minus a. 
So a minus a is equal to a cos omega. Likewise, the second equation becomes a plus b. You know, it should be measured from the mean position, which means that this is going to be a minus a plus b is equal to a cos 2 omega. So, I have equation 1 and equation 2. So, what are those equations? a small a is equal to a minus a cos omega. So, you can go back, pause the video, go back to the uh, earlier slide and check what that equation is. a is equal to a minus a cos omega. I have transferred it from one side to the other. a plus b is equal to a minus a cos 2 omega. So, if I simplify it further, what do you get? a minus a. This can be written as 2 cos square omega minus 1. That is equal to a minus a into 2 into cos omega is already known to me. From the earlier equation I know cos omega is nothing but 1 minus a by a. So, I have 1 minus a divided by a whole square minus 1. That further simplifies to a is equal to from this equation 2 a square divided by 3a minus b, 3a minus b. So, uh, this is the amplitude of the resulting wave, resulting amplitude, the amplitude of the SHM. 2a square divided by 3a minus b. Okay, another one. One end of a spring of force constant k is fixed to a vertical wall and the other to a body of mass m resting on a smooth horizontal surface. There is another wall at a distance x naught from the body. The spring is then compressed by a distance 2 x naught and released. The time taken to strike the wall is ok. So we can show the construction like this. this distance is x naught and this is compressed by a distance to x naught and released. Right? So, this is position A, this is position B and this is position C we will call. Now, the time taken is equal to time taken to travel from A to B plus time taken to travel from B to C. That is right? Yes. Now, the time taken to travel from A to B is clearly one fourth of the period because it is traveling from extreme position to mean position. So, it is T by D 4 plus the distance B C corresponds to half the amplitude starting from the mean position. So, this is x naught. We have seen that the amplitude is 2 x naught. So, clearly x naught is half the amplitude position. And you may wish to recall that the time taken for this journey is t by 12. So, this is t by 12 that is t divided by 3. So, the total time taken is t divided by 3 and this is one third of 2 pi root m divided by k. So, the total time taken is one third of 2 pi root m divided by k. So, this is the total time taken by the particle or block to travel from the end compressed end to the wall. C is our correct choice. Let us take up a couple of questions based on this chapter waves and sound as well. In a resonance column, the first and the second resonance are obtained at depth 22.7 centimeter and 70.2 centimeter. The third resonance will be obtained at a depth of OK. So, first resonance is at 22.7, second is at 70.2, the third resonance OK. So, uh, if I consider the first resonance, 
that corresponds to L1 plus E is equal to lambda divided by 4. Second happens at L2 plus E is equal to 3 lambda divided by 4 and the third is L3 plus E is equal to 5 lambda divided by 4. So, what do you have? L1 is 22.7 plus E is equal to lambda divided by 4 and the second is 70.2 plus E is equal to 3 lambda divided by 4. So, with the help of these two equations, we can subtract one from the other. I have 70.2 minus 22.7 is equal to what am I going to get? 3 by 4, 3 minus 1 that is 2, 2 divided by 4, 1 by 2. So, lambda divided by 2 and that gives me lambda by 4 is equal to what is it? 70.2 minus 22.7 divided by 2. Now, I am going to use this expression and find out the value of E also. So, we can substitute this into this equation to find out the value of L3. So, with the help of first two equations, I will find out the value of L, lambda and E and then substitute in the third equation. That gives the third resonance which can be calculated as 117.7 centimeter. So, the third resonance occurs at a distance of 117.117.7 centimeter. Next one. A sonometer wire of length L is plucked at a distance of L by 8 from one end and then it vibrates with a minimum frequency. If the same wire is plucked at a distance L by 6 from another end, the minimum frequency with which it vibrates is. This wire which is fixed at both the ends, this is L, this is L by 2, this is L by 4 and this is L by 8. It is plucked at a distance L by 2. The point which is plucked becomes antinode. Right, so we can show the construction like this. So, you notice the number of loops here. So, this is the situation corresponding to the first case. In the second case, same wire. And this time it is plucked at a distance L by 6. So, I am going to divide it into 3 parts and this is L by 6. So, this is the construction for the second case. So, I can write L by 8 is equal to lambda by 4 and the frequency F1 is equal to V divided by lambda 1 it is lambda 1 here and in the second case L by 6 is equal to lambda 2 divided by 4 and F2 is equal to what is it? It is going to be V divided by lambda 2 correct, but the minimum frequency corresponds to the same value F1 and F2 are equal to each other. So, we can substitute it here, substitute in this equation and we notice that this N1, this is nothing but N and this is nothing but the other frequency, the minimum frequency. So, we can write N1, suppose I call this as N1. So, if I take the ratio, I get N1 is equal to 3 by 4 times N. So, the minimum frequency with which it vibrates is 3 by 4 times n, 3 by 4 times n. Example 11, a sound wave travels with a velocity of 300 meter per second through a gas. 9 beats are produced in 3 seconds when two waves pass through it simultaneously. If one of the waves has 2 meter wavelength, the wavelength of the other wave is. Okay. 
simple idea you know beat frequency is equal to the difference between the actual frequencies that is 3 is equal to v divided by lambda 1 minus v divided by lambda 2 so 3 is equal to right because he says 9 bits are heard in 3 seconds that means one, 3 bits are heard in every second 3 is equal to v v is 300 1 divided by 2 difference that is lambda 2 so if you simplify it further what do we get lambda 2 is equal to 2.04 meter so the wavelength of the other wave is 2.04 meter example 2 tuning forks with natural frequency is 340 Hz, each move relative to a stationary observer. One fork moves away from the listener while the other moves towards him at the same speed. The listener hears beats, beat frequency 3 Hz. Find the speed of the fork. Okay. So observe their natural frequencies are 340. One moves away from the listener while the other moves towards him at the same speed. Okay. So, here is the construction, here is the observer and one moves towards him, the other moves away from him. F1 is moving towards him and F2 is moving away from him. And both of them have the same frequency, I call it as F0, you may notice that 340 Hz each, right. So now, we have to find out this. So, he receives two frequencies F1 and F2. F1 is because of the first one approaching him and F2 is because of the second one receding from him. F1 is equal to F0 into V minus VO is 0 divided by V minus Vs. This is your basic expression F0 into V divided by V minus V1. Let us call this as V1. This is also V1. That is first frequency. And the second is it is moving away. That is right. So, what does it become? F0 into V divided by V. This is the direction of sound for the other and therefore it becomes V plus V1. So, F2 is equal to F0 into V divided by V plus V1. Therefore, the beat frequency is the difference between these two frequencies, which is F0 V divided by V minus V1 minus F0 V divided by V plus V1. F0 and V come outside and we are left with V plus V1 minus of V minus V1 whole divided by v square minus v1 square. We can substitute for these details. He says the beat frequency uh, is also given and f0 is also given. So, beat frequency is given, f0 is given and we are given the value of v as well and it is uh, easy to find out the value of v1. I am leaving the calculations to you here. So, v1 is equal to one example 13. The tension in a piano wire is 10 Newton. What should be the tension in the wire to produce a note of double the frequency? Okay. You know that the frequency is given by 1 by 2L square root of T by M, where M is the mass per unit length. This is applicable in the case of a stretched string. 
So notice that frequency is directly proportional to t. That's right. So f2 divided by f1 is equal to square root of t2 divided by t1. Or I will write f2 is equal to f1 into square root of t2 divided by t1. But he says f2 is equal to 2f. So 2f is equal to f into root of t2 divided by 10 or t2 is equal to 10 into 4 that is 40 newton. So the tension required in the wire to produce a note of double the frequency is 40 newton. C is the correct choice. Example 14. If equation of sound wave is given by y is equal to 0.0015 sin 62.4x plus 3160, then its wavelength is. Let us compare this equation y is equal to 0.0015 sin 62.4x plus 3160 with the standard equation y is equal to 0, y is equal to a sin omega t plus kx or say kx plus omega t. What do we notice? We notice k is equal to 62.4. But you know k is 2 pi by lambda. So 2 pi by lambda is 62.4. Or lambda is equal to, what is it? 2 pi divided by 62.4 and 2 into 3.14 divided by 62.4. So you can see this is approximately 20 times. So 1 by uh, 20 or 1 by 10 0 0.1 unit. Therefore the wavelength is nearly 0 0.1 unit. Next one. The velocities of sound at the same temperature in two monatomic gases of densities rho1 and rho2 are v1 and v2 respectively. If rho1 divided by rho2 is 4, then the value of v1 divided by v2 is. You know that the speed of sound in a gaseous medium is given by root of gamma p divided by rho. That is, v is proportional to 1 by under root rho. Or v2 divided by v1 is equal to root of rho1 divided by rho2. But here we want the value of v1 divided by v2. So v1 by v2 is equal to root of rho2 divided by rho1. And he says rho2 divided by rho1 is 1 by 4. This is 1 by 2. So the ratio is 1 divided by 2. V1 divided by V2 is 1 divided by 2. Remember, it is V1 divided by V2, not V2 divided by V1. Next one. A visual revolves in a circle with angular speed 20 radian per second using a string of length 50 centimeter. If the frequency of sound from the visual is 385 hertz, what is the minimum frequency heard by an observer is far away from the center. Velocity of sound in air is 340 meter per second. Okay. So there is a source which revolves in a circle using a string of length 50 centimeter. And the minimum frequency heard by the observer, okay. So here is the stationary observer and this is the construction, That's right? This is the construction. Now the whistle is moving along these directions. So the sound travels along this direction. Observe that the observer is far away, which means that for all practical purposes, we can ignore the size of this circle and you know that frequency is minimum when the source is moving away that means corresponding to this situation we have 
minimum frequency. So it is like this, we have this observer and the source is moving away. And that corresponds to V divided by V plus Vs. Right? It is very simple now. And V is, what is the value of V? The speed of sound is 340 into, of course, F0 is there, my fault. F0 is 385 into V is 340 divided by 340 plus Vs. Speed of uh, the source can be written as A omega. It is traveling in a circle where A is this distance or R omega you can write. So this is nothing but half into omega is 20 therefore this is 10. So we have 340 plus 10 that is 385 into 340 divided by 350 and it simplifies to 374 hertz. So the minimum frequency recorded by the observer is 374 hertz. Example 17. An organ pipe enclosed at one end has fundamental frequency of 1500 hertz. The maximum number of overtones generated by this pipe with in which a normal person can hear this. So he is telling you maximum frequency must be 20,000 hertz that's the audibility limit and fundamental frequency is 1500 hertz and it is closed at one end that's right it is closed at one end it is open at the other end and let let n represent the overtone then the frequency corresponding to nth overtone is given by 2n plus 1 into f, right? So the maximum number of overtones is 2 into n that is 20,000 is equal to 2 into n plus 1 into f that is 1500 which gives us n is equal to 6. A is our correct choice. Next one. A closed organ pipe of length L and an open organ pipe contain gases of densities rho 1 and rho 2 respectively. The compressibility of gases are equal in both the pipes. Both the pipes are vibrating in their first overtone with same frequency. The length of the open pipe is. It's a closed organ pipe of length L and another open pipe contain gas of densities rho 1 and rho 2. Their compressibilities are equal. They are vibrating their first overtone with the same frequency. The length of the open pipe is. <coughs> Here, the first overtone of closed organ pi corresponds to 3 f naught and the first overtone of open pipe corresponds to a frequency of 2 f naught. He says 3 f naught is equal to 2 f naught. So 3 times V divided by frequency of sound in open pipe divided by 4 L right length of the open pipe is equal to 2 times this is V naught divided by 2 L uh, we can call it as closed pipe. This is V O open pipe and this is 3 F naught this is closed pipe so I will write as closed pipe and this is open pipe. So 3 times V C. 
divided by 4 LC is equal to 2 times VO divided by 2 LO. The question is about the length of the open pipe. So this is 4 by 3 times speed of sound in open pipe, speed of sound in closed pipe into length of the closed pipe. This is our basic expression. That further becomes 4 by 3. You know, speed is inversely proportional to the density. So you can write, this is square root of rho 1 divided by rho 2, rho 1 divided by rho 2 into length of the closed pipe. So, 4 by 3 L root of rho 1 divided by rho 2. This is the length of the open pipe. So, length of the open pipe is equal to 4 L divided by 3 root of rho 1 divided by rho 2. B is our correct choice. Nineteen. An open pipe is in resonance with second harmonic with frequency f1. Now one end of the tube is closed and the frequency is increased to f2 such that the resonance again occurs, occurs in nth harmonic. Choose the correct option. Now, the second harmonic of open pipe is F1. So, F1 is equal to 2 times V by 2L or V divided by L. Nth harmonic of closed pipe is F2. That is, n times V by 4L is equal to F2. n is equal to 1, 3, 5, etc. Only odd harmonics are generated. So, F2 is equal to n by 4 into V divided by L that is F1. So, n by 4 into f1, that is f2 is equal to n by 4 times f1. So, f I mean, as f2 is greater than f1, n should be greater than 1 and it should be odd also. So, n should be greater than 4 and it should be an odd number. So, the next best possibility becomes uh, 5 divided by 4 times f1. So, the correct option is n is equal to 5, right? Once you find the value of n is equal to 5, the value of f2 should be 5 by 4 f1. So, b should be our correct choice. Next one. A source of sound S is moving with a velocity 50 meter per second towards a stationary observer. The observer measures the frequency of the source as 1000 Hz. What is the apparent frequency of the source when it is moving away from the observer after crossing him? The velocity of sound in the medium is 350 meter per second. Okay. This is the construction. Here is a stationary observer, source is moving along this direction and the observer, observer measures the frequency as 1000 Hz. That means during its approach, the apparent frequency is F1. Now, he says, what is the apparent frequency when it is moving away from him? Okay. So, clearly F1 is equal to F0 in, into V divided by V minus Vs. And F2 is equal to F0, V divided by V plus Vs as it is moving away. That's right. So, these are the apparent frequencies during approach and during uh, recession. They move away, I mean when it is moving away. Now, the question is, uh, what are the data we are given? We are given its velocity and the 
uh, value of f1 and the velocity of sound in the medium is also given. So I will take the ratio f2 divided by f1 is equal to what is f2 divided by f1 f0 into v divided by v plus vs divided by f0 into v divided by v minus vs. So I have f2 divided by f1 is equal to v and v cancel leaving v minus vs divided by v plus vs or f2 is equal to f1 into v minus vs divided by v plus vs. Do we know the value of f1? Yes, that is 1000 v 350 minus 50 divided by 350 plus 50. And you can simplify it further. It gives us 750 hertz. So 750 hertz is the frequency of the sound recorded by the observer when the source moves away from him. With this problem, we have come to the end of this session. So practice all these problems one more time, get familiarized with these basic equations and learn the concepts clearly. All the best.